Hey everybody and welcome to the 25th Annual Surf Cup. I'm Ken Gonzalez for Georgia Land Event Productions and you have a boys under 17 match right before your eyes. This is the bracket play to determine who goes into the elimination rounds and we have the Chicago wind going up against Colorado Real. The wind in blue, Real with the white jerseys and red trunks and it's the wind moving from left to right on your screen as they move over to the far side of the field. And we'll watch the action unfold here and we'll get you the rosters for each of these teams in just a few minutes. We don't want to miss any early goals. It's happened to me time and time again. You start reading the roster before these teams get to know each other. Somebody sneaks through in the back door and scores a goal. And we've missed it just like that. So the ball right here at midfield and it's the wind trying to penetrate deep into the Real territory. Ball is out over on the far sideline. We're at field nine here on this nice August day, Sunday. We're in Del Mar, California, the Polo Grounds, just north, about 20, 25 minutes of downtown San Diego. And the wind starting to pick up, as well as the sun now, starting to peek through the marine layer that's been here most of the morning. 9.40 starts, but still early. And this should be a fast-paced game. Now, normally when you're under 17, you play a little bit longer, but this is Surf Cup, and these are just playing games. So we will have two 30-minute halves and no overtime. So if it ends in a tie, it ends in a tie. They just get points for goals scored, wins, and ties. Of course, nothing for a lost win here on the near side. Their shot on goal will be just wide. So for the win, their first shot on goal, it's just wide, but they're showing that they showed up here. They're ready to play penetrating deep into that defense of Colorado Real. Wind a little swirly here today. We look at the flags on the far side and they're blowing from west to east. Then here on the near side, flags are blowing north-south. So a little bit of some Mother Nature trickery going on here early on. As we said, we're just underway. And the ball belongs to Colorado Real over on the far side. Andy Ryan, the keeper, barking out some orders to his team. As he's come well out of the box here, about midway to midfield over on the left side of the field. And this ball rolls here to the near side and goes out. Ball right in front of the net. Real clears it away. Another shot by the wind, but not able to get any muscle behind it. That was number 38, Chris Mills. And that ball easily picked up by the Real keeper, Tyler. So the goal kick for Colorado. Ball at midfield. Bounces once, twice. Let's see, finally comes down. And Colorado trying to penetrate that backfield, but a lot of blue jerseys getting back on defense, trying to clear it up towards midfield again. The ball rolls here to the far side. Now right down the middle of the shot. Will be just wide. So a corner kick coming up for Real. Nicely placed, nice job of clearing it away by the keeper, Andy Ryan. Ball will bounce here to the near side. Taken away by the white team, Colorado. Now they want to center the ball right in the middle. A lot of blue jerseys will converge, make things tough. And as the ball rolls over to the far side, it is the team from Chicago, the wind, bringing it up across midfield. Nice job, Stefan. Number nine. Ball across midfield. Still bouncing, taken there by Chicago. Right over to the keeper, and Andy Ryan will boot it up across, but right at midfield and on the header. Colorado sends it back the other way. Stefan Antonievic, number nine for the win, and there's a shot by number 21 right into the hands of Tyler, the keeper. And a save right there for Colorado. 
That ball high into the air, and as it comes down, there's a header. Number 21 for Colorado, Matt Layson took that last shot on goal. Colorado with the center pass and the header high to the air, right into the hands of Andy Ryan. He loses it for just a second, but is able to recover. Nice, strong kick. Comes down, taken again right there. There's number 21, Matt. Over to the far side, streaking to the net, but a nice slide by Colorado. Mucks up the momentum there on the far side. That was number eight. Anthony Colazzi for the win, who was taken out there. Matt, Matt. And the ball goes out on that far side, or actually across that back line, and we'll have a corner kick for the win. Again, no score here in the first half. Win trying to set something up, ball on the ground. Now moves into the middle. They set it for the header. Comes high into the air and is cleared away, but not far enough. There's a shot. Again, number 21, Matt. Takes a nice shot to the net, but again, the keeper, Tyler, is there. Tyler Picard. Colorado getting loose here on the near side. Blue jerseys again, though. Now back here again, and the ball is out. Off of number three, Adam Rappin. Number 18 there, Zach Salas. Long crossfield pass, still bouncing, still rolling to the far side, and has a battle for it over there. Number eight, Anthony. Can't quite keep it. Colorado Real moves it into the middle of the field again. And again, taken away by the wind. So when either of these teams get near the net on the other side, they're taken back the other way. So the defenses do a good job in deep. And we have no score yet. Adam Rappin, number three, will put the ball into play. Looks for an opening. Now it goes in the middle, a lot of traffic there. Number 38. Chris Mills. Rapping here on the near side. Into the middle. Now trying to make a move. That's number 23, Ben Chavers. And that ball rolls out across the back line. Last touch by Blue, so it'll be a goal kick for Colorado. And as they take this goal kick, we'll give you the rosters for the wind. See there on the far side, the wind taking it away on defense. Can they clear it across? Again, into the hands of Andy Ryan, the keeper. So number one, Ricky Kinka. Number three is Adam Rappin. Number five, Alex Johnson. Number eight is Anthony Kaladzi. Number nine, Stefan Antonievic. Number 12, Derek Ho. Number 13, Thomas Kaufman. Number 19, Eric Castrejon. Number 21, Matt Eliason. Number 23, Ben Chavers. Number 28, Brandon Fox. Number 30, Jaime Castrejon. Number 38, Chris Mills. And the keeper, Andy Ryan. The head coach is Michael Litvak. And the sun getting stronger as this game goes on. Starting to beat down, coming up from the east. And that wind still continues to blow. Right in the middle of the field, Thomas Kaufman, number 13. Long cross field pass. Intercepted here by number 18, that's Salas. Zach Salas for Colorado Real. And now it's the team from the Windy City, the Chicago Wind, bringing it up across midfield, and the ball is out on the far side. And for Rail Colorado, coached by Neil Payne, club director Lauren Donaldson. 
We'll get you the rosters for the white team. Real Colorado. Number three, Joshua Bailey. Number 10 is Keegan Bass. Number seven, Tyler Burns. Number 16, Brian Christensen. And that ball rolls out across the back line. Number two, Ryan Sito. Number 19, Gary Cole. Number nine, Grant Cowles. Number 13, Jordan Dallinger. Number 11, Reese Flores. Number five, Aaron Kepler. The keeper, Tyler Picard. Number eight, Devin Royball. Number 18, Zach Salas. Number 17 is Jared Sanchez. Number 21, Sai El Hadi. Number 20, Zach Frazier. And number 25 is Drew Zamora. So there you have it, the rosters for each of these squads. We can concentrate on the action on the field now. And the goal kick right down the middle of the field, but again, taken there by number 21, Matt Eliason. And his shot will be deflected away by Tyler, the keeper, Picard. Adam Rappin with the corner. He goes right to the ground, doesn't exactly attack, attack the net. Now the ball is long, headed right back into the middle. And a little bit of a fancy lad shot right there for the win. And again, the ball goes out. Would have been number three. You have number eight on the far side, Anthony Colazzi. Number 30, Jaime Castrejon. Again, no score. We're here in the first half. Two 30-minute halves, no overtime. Again, these are just play-in games. And we've reached about 13 minutes into this first half. So almost midway. Real moving the ball upfield over on the far side. The ball rolls untouched, and we get a whistle by the referee and we have had an injured player for the wind could be Ricky Kinka number one so after that injury we're back it'll be a goal or a kick for the wind and everybody seems to be okay and that was Ricky Kinka who took that spill there was actually forced down so on the penalty, the ball given up by Real. Ball rolls here to the near side. Win number three, Adam Rappin. Off to number 23 is teammate Ben Chavers. Chavers still here in the corner. Wants the ball. Rappin, though, comes out. Brings it out, now he moves into the middle, number nine, Stefan Antonievic. Back out to nine again, now he goes over to the left side of the field. The far side, ball cleared away by Colorado, but unable to bring it across midfield. And number five, Alex Johnson on the far side for the win, loses it. But last touch by the white team, Colorado. And the win want to get some substitutions into the game, and they will. And it looks like Chavers will come out, number 23. And number 28, Brandon Fox into the game for the win. So Chavers, Ben comes out, Fox comes in. Throw over on the far side, header by Colorado. Ball on the ground, bounces a couple of times. Now we to the far side. Now the ball moves into the middle of the field and across, but nice job. Antonievic there in the middle of the field, number nine. Stops the momentum of Colorado. They still have the ball, but they're not able to penetrate as quickly as they want it. And they have to bring it out. And now they want to use the far sideline. Look into the middle of the field. They pass it there, number 11. That's Reese Flores. And the keeper. Andy Ryan will make the stop. So this Chicago Wind Squad, Nationals, U-17, first in their league, their division, and they place first in the Midwest Regional League. So this is a team who comes prepared quite obviously. Used to those first place finishes, the ball out on the other side.
quickly put back into play by the win. They want to attack quickly. Fox, number 28, was there. And number 21, Matt Liason. Flores, Reese Flores again, number 11 for Colorado. Nice crossfield pass hitter, number eight, Zach Salas. Salas now getting into some physical play here on the near side, and he's going to be whistled for that penalty right in front of us as he grabbed number 28, Brandon Fox. To Nivek here on the near side. Over to number three, Rappin. Rappin now moves into the middle of the field. Nice little touch pass. Fox went one way, the ball went the other. So goal kick. Picard, the keeper. Everybody back towards midfield. Nice, strong, right-legged kick. Just below midfield. Colorado. And now number nine for the win. Keeps it here at midfield, but it goes back the other way to the left. Trying to attack number 25, Drew Zamora, but he's going to be stopped, held up. There's a shot towards the net, and that will be wide. Off the leg of number seven, Tyler Burns, and a goal kick for Chicago. And Chicago wants a substitution. Coming into the game, number 12, Derek Ho. He will replace number five, Alex Johnson. So the action continues there on the field after the substitution. Wynn getting back on defense. They've got some numbers back there. Let's see if they can clear it away. Rapping ball gets away from him. Number eight now attacking for Colorado, Devin Roybal. And the ball goes out, belongs to the white team, Colorado. Colorado with the center pass. Off the leg of number nine, Grant Cowles. Ball bounces in the middle. Now here at midfield. Again, though, Colorado controlling the ball as he move over to the far sideline. Ho in a foot race over on the far side. Doesn't get there quite in time. The ball is centered. Cleared away, though, by the win. Now it comes back. Colorado again. They're going to take a shot, and that's going to be high. And out. Not exactly the shot Colorado wanted right there. But they are putting the pressure on the defense for Chicago. And a goal kick. And the keeper, Andy Ryan, will take the kick. And we've hit the 21st minute mark here of this half. Collision right in front of us. That's going to go against Chicago's number 28, Brandon Fox, as he went right over the back. And number eight, Devin Roybal will take the kick right down the middle. Angles towards the far side. Now it comes out. Shot to the net again wide off the leg of number five, Aaron Kepler. So the ball last touched by the Chicago win, and it'll be a corner kick for Colorado. In the near side, the west corner. Kick centered nicely, high into the air on the header. Oh, just over the top bar. And that's as close as anybody has come to scoring here in this first half. And so the wind dodge a bullet right there as that corner kick was centered beautifully, going high up in the air for the header. 
Colorado, and I believe that might have been number five. Aaron Kepler, and the ball just sailed high. Ball just below midfield for the win. Now they try to bring it across as they move it here to the near side. Rappin upfield just a little bit too long. He led that pass and it was cleared away by Colorado. Now down the middle. With his foot on the ball, number 30. Jaime Castrejon, we're going to get a whistle. We have an injured player for the wind. All right, so we're back. Ken Gonzalez for George Langevin Productions. Again, we're at the Surf Cup, 2005 Surf Cup, the 25th annual Surf Cup. Two teams here and from out of state. We've got the Colorado Real team in white and the Chicago Wind in blue. And the keeper will take the kick. Andy Ryan, nice strong leg, well across midfield. Rappin goes up, ball still on the ground, nobody controlling it now here on the near side, Rappin number three. Now he moves into the middle, left footed kick into the middle and it comes out here again to the near side, number 38, Chris Mills. Mills now sizing up the defense, center just a little bit long, keeper comes out to flex it away and the ball still rolls untouched to the far side. Will anybody get there? Colorado does. And now Colorado wants to bring it up. They're at midfield. One turn, now across. Ball will roll and roll. Finally taken by Colorado. Center pass, Rappin with a nice save right there, number three. Good job, defense for the win, gets back and they dodge a bullet right there. Colorado still with the ball over on the far side. Ball still on the left side of the field. Collision right in front of the referee and a yellow card now issued to number 13 of Colorado. That was a violent collision, I guess you could say. Jordan Dallinger for Colorado with the yellow card. Now let's see if this could turn into a break here for the win. Very late here in the first half. We have no score, just a few minutes to go. And so we'll have to watch the referee, listen for that whistle. And we could play a scoreless first half here. Again, number five, Aaron Kepler. Ball below midfield comes up. Colorado, collision in midfield, we keep playing. Ball here on the near side now. Rapid number three looks upfield. Nice little pass on the ground, changing directions. Number 28, Brandon Fox. Over to Rapid again, now into the middle. Chris Mills, 38. Over to nine, Antijevic. It's Antijevic. Now here on the near side, number 21 takes a shot to the net. It's gonna be just high and out. Matt Eliason. Picard will take it. Nice little line drive kick. Just below midfield, but on the header it hits, goes across. Colorado trying to make something happen here late in the first half. Moving the ball over to the far side now. They're trying to spread the field, maybe spread the defense for Chicago. Now they move into the middle. They're coming in deep too. The blue team letting them in. Ball on the far side, they're coming over to help out two on one. The defense does its job, the ball rolls out. And last touch by Colorado. Ball unable to go too far. Now at midfield, the white team trying to set something up. It's late here again in the first half. 
Sun now starting to bake down on both of these teams high into the air, unable to take the header because Andy Ryan comes out, makes a nice stop, the keeper for Chicago. And so Colorado is turned away after they had held the ball there for a minute or two, trying to penetrate that defense, but nothing doing. And Chicago now brings it up. Ball into the middle now. Colorado bringing it down. Angle it to the near side. Now wanting to change directions. Number 17 will take a shot to the net, and that ball will just keeps soaring. And out. Number 17, Jared Sanchez with the kick. And quickly, Andy Ryan gets the ball in for the goal kick. Ball at midfield, Colorado. Again, not allowing the wind to get in deep here the last maybe six, seven minutes of this half. It's been Colorado here on the left side of the field trying to attack the net. They still haven't gotten one in there. We still remain tied at nil. And the ball still on the ground. Let's see who will control it. It gets away. Coming out, Ryan. Net was open there for just a second. Now he gets right back in. And it's going to have to come out for Colorado. Colorado having to bring it out. Now they move into the middle. In towards the net. Angle to the far side. Left footed kick stopped by Chicago. And now let's see if the blue team can bring it across midfield. Taken away from behind. Number five. Nice job by Colorado. Aaron Kepler. And that whistle penalty goes against Kepler. And Chicago. Has it right there in the circle, just below midfield. Ball roll out here on the near side. And should belong to the wind, and it does. Rapid number three here on the near side. Looks upfield. Doesn't go upfield, but sends it into the middle. Off to his teammate, number 13. Thomas Kaufman. Somebody trying to come up with the ball over on the far side. A whistle, it finally goes out and belongs to Colorado. And now according to our watch, we've actually hit Thirty minutes. So that whistle should be blown by the referee any time, and there it is. There is the end of the first half of this match between the Chicago Win and Colorado Real, and they played a scoreless first half. I'm Ken Gonzalez for George Langevin Productions. We'll be back with the second half in just a minute. Ken Gonzalez for George Landrevin Productions. We're back for the start of the second half of this match, featuring the Chicago win and Colorado Real. We played a scoreless first half, so now we've got 30 minutes to determine if we get a winner here, if we play to a tie. Very evenly matched teams here, although coming off the field, a couple of players for the win commenting on the fact that they played very well, maybe the first half of that first half and kind of let things get away. So they feel that they are definitely the better team here and just need to get going. And it will be the wind to put the ball in the player in the near side. Again, we've changed sides. The wind moving from right to left. Now here in the second half in the blue.
Little bit of a misfire there on the header for Colorado. Ball off the side of the face and out here on the near side. And number eight, Anthony Kalatsu will put the ball into play. Over to number 23, Ben Chavers. Chavers now surrounded by three white jerseys, is able to break away, move the ball into the middle of the field. Colorado, though, is there. They plug up the middle and they clear it away. Not across midfield yet, though. And on this kick, they will bring it across. Nice header as the ball moves back deeper into the backfield of the win. Touch pass there with the right leg. Now they're going to race down the far sideline, grabbing, touching, pulling on the jerseys. No whistle. They're letting it play here in the second half. Ball in the middle of the field, number 21, Eliason. And the ball still here on the right side. Rapid number three with a center pass. Trying to get it to Chris Mills, number 38. Back to Rapid. He's trying desperately to move in to the backfield there, but his momentum was stopped. White jerseys. Rapid gets to the ball again, though, is able to recover. Now pushes it out here on top as he move here to the near side. Number five, Alex Johnson. Right here at midfield. Now the ball comes back for Colorado. And Colorado really not trying to set much up there on offense as that ball goes right to Andy Ryan, the keeper. Ball on the near side. Number 20 for Colorado, Zach Frazier. Center pass, oh, and it's going to be misfired there on the far side. Goes out across the back line. And a goal kick for Andy Ryan. Ryan with that strong leg. Boots the ball high into the air. With a little help on the header, it goes across midfield. But Colorado, quick to the ball. Wind here on the near side. Now they move into the middle. There's number 30 for the win. Jaime Castrejon. Eliason, now over to the far side. Rappin. Back into the middle, number 38, Mills. Rappin again, moves from the far side into the middle. Ball rolls here to the near side. Anthony Colazzo, number eight. Anthony changes directions, now moves into the middle of the field. Chavers, there's a shot on goal. Oh, it's going to be just wide. Number 21. And it's Chicago getting the shot on goal right there, not wasting an opportunity. It's just wide. Picard, the keeper, will take the goal kick. Again, just underway here in the second half, two or three minutes in. Jaime Castrejon, number 30, goes up for the header. Ball still here. Now it's just above midfield. Coming across now, number five for Colorado, Aaron Kepler. And as the ball rolls over to the far side, running it down, number 18, Zach Salas, being chased by Ben Chavers, number 23. Rappin now battling over on the far side for the ball. Moves into the middle. And the ball taken away from behind. Chicago comes back from right to left. Chavers now in a foot race over on the far side. Can't get an angle. He's in between four white jerseys. He'll take the shot on goal, though. And going down on a couple of knees there, or at least one, was the keeper, Picard. Tyler makes a stop. Ball right at midfield. Now rolls here to the near sideline. Number 20 for Colorado, Zach Frazier. And his shot will go well over the net, over to the next field. So goal kick for Chicago. Andy Ryan's kick over to the far side. Rapping now, battling there with number eight. We're going to watch that here in the second half. Things are getting physical over there. Number eight for Real Colorado, Devin Roybal. Chavers, number 23. Passes it off. Now they come right out again. Which way do they go here to the near side? But 
the pass just a little bit errant. And a ball taken away by Colorado. And as Riel tries to break into the backfield of the wind, the Blue Jerseys try to bring it up to midfield, but they're going to lose it there. Aaron pass again into the middle of the field, taken away by Colorado Riel. And from this corner, Frazier takes a shot into the hands of Andy Ryan. Number eight. Anthony Colazzi, number eight, again, trying to put it in the middle, but it's going to be taken away by Colorado Real. And Colorado now trying to spread the field. They move into the middle, change of direction. Now they bring it back out. They really want to set up some good offensive sets right here. It's very obvious. The last two times downfield, they've been more patient than they were earlier on. Kepler, number five. Oh, a lazy pass taken away. And taking one to the shin, number three, Rappin. Kepler, number five, is going to be talked to by the referee. No card, but Rappin still in pain on the far side. And so Rappin will have to come off the field. Number 12 will take his place, Derek Ho. And hopefully Rappin can return here for Chicago as soon as he's getting helped off the field by his head coach. Michael Lidvak, as he really did take a stinger to the shin from number five, Aaron Kepler of Colorado. And so now the action continues, the ball right at midfield. Referee getting in the way just a little bit, made a nice screen right there, kind of helped out Colorado momentarily, but Chicago able to recover. Now the ball moves here to the near side, number 38. Chris Mills into the corner. Anthony Kalaito, number eight. Castre Hone, number 30 now. Again into the middle. Eliason, number 21. Now he comes back again. Surrounded by white jerseys, moves here to the near side, into the corner. Anthony saves it from going out. He'll take a shot towards the net. And the center pass just off the fingertips of the keeper, Tyler Picard, but he's able to recover. And he snags the ball. He's got that strong leg, so Chicago needs to get back on defense quickly. And it's Colorado with the ball deep in Chicago territory. And the ball goes out and belongs to Colorado at number 20, who's been busy here in the second half. Zach Frazier will put the ball into play. Frazier inbounds off to number nine, Grant Coles. Grant tries a center pass there, but it's loose on the ground. Chavers, number 23, Ben running into some trouble. Ball comes across midfield, still belongs to Colorado. Now they're going to spread things out as they move here to the near side. Upfield pass, ball bounces into the middle, taken away by Chicago, number five, Alex Johnson. Ball goes back to Andy Ryan, and he boots it up towards midfield. But again, the white jerseys taking it away. And now they want to attack. Frazier here on the near side of the ball will be saved on the dive to his left by Andy Ryan. So Andy Ryan not going unnoticed here with his play in front of the net today. What a great job. And he uses his whole body right there. And I tell you what, if that ball would have gotten by him, Frazier would have had a nice open shot at the net there. Wouldn't have had a great angle, but definitely enough to get one off. And I'm not sure Ryan could have recovered quickly enough on that one. But he knows his skills, his limitations, and he knew right there that he was going to snag that ball on that slide, and he did. So the ball over on the far side now, and will belong to Colorado Real. I'm Ken Gonzalez for George Langevin Productions. Another great day here in Del Mar, California. And of course, the action would not be able to be viewed on your screen without the talents of our fine camera operator today, Mike All. Ball now below midfield, comes up across again. Now Anthony Colette, number eight. He'll move into the, tries to get into the box, but taken away by Colorado. And Anthony 
did a good job kind of sneaking up on that defense here on the near side into the corner. The pass was just off, maybe by a foot or two on the wrong side, and he wasn't able to explode with it. He had to wait up, and that little wait right there allowed Colorado to get to the ball and take it away. But Chicago right down the middle now. Anthony again here on the near side. Little touch pass back into the middle. A whistle. Penley's going to go against Chicago. Maybe an offsides call. All across midfield. Frazier here on the near side. Number 20 comes back. Coles number nine. Coles with the center pass, but again, didn't get much on it. It's taken away by Chicago. They're here on the near side. Anthony puts it back into the middle of the field. Tanijevic, number nine, comes across midfield over to number 20, Eliason. And a little bit of a trip up right there. That's hitting the ground first was number 11 for Colorado, Reese Flores. And as number 21, Matt, tried to make his move from behind, he's taken out as he kind of just stumbles over the player. And now we're going to have two injured players right here at midfield. And we're back. After the injury to Reese Flores, number 11, he's being helped off the field. And for Chicago, number 13 on substitution, coming in Thomas Kaufman and number 28, Brandon Fox. Well, I'll try that again. As, as Reese Flores comes out, we're going to need a substitution so that each side is at full strength. And so for Colorado, they get their substitution in, and now we can start. And there's a kick, so we're underway again here in the second half. Again, remember, no score for each of these squads, Colorado and Chicago. Chicago with the ball as they move it here to the near side. And the angle, they want to go right up the middle now. Number 13, Thomas Kaufman is going to lose the ball. Too many white jerseys. And number 20, Frazier, here on the near side. Zach Frazier. And not sure if he wanted, actually, to center that ball, but... It'll go out on the far side. Goal kick for Chicago. Ball rolls just to the left of the keeper. Andy Ryan and again. He makes another diving stop on that ball. Not able to tell from this angle if it was going to go into the net, but another nice save right there. That's twice here in the second half. He's made a dive to his left. Now bringing it across for Chicago. Chris Mills, number 38, over to the far side to Ho. Number 12, Derek Ho. Fox passes it off, coming in deep as Chicago right in front of the net, cleared away, but comes back the other way. Oh, Anthony, number eight. His shot is going to be blocked just as he takes it right in front of the net. And another header by Fox, that ball high into the air. And caught as it comes down by Tyler Picard, the keeper for Colorado. So a very dangerous exchange right there for Colorado as Chicago was right there in front of the net. They had a couple of chances each time they were turned away. And now they have to get back on defense, and they do, stopping the momentum of Colorado and momentarily coming up with the ball. Coffin number 13 into the middle now. Battle for the ball. Now it comes here to the near side. Anthony, number eight, moves into the middle of the field. Now it comes across midfield. Bud Colorado getting back, and it'll go out here on the near side. And substitute. Substitutions for Chicago coming back into the game. Number three, Adam Rappin. And Rappin will replace number five, Alex Johnson. 
Castrojon, number 30, puts a ball into play here on the near side. Elias, at number 21, moves into the middle of the field now. On their heels, a defense for Colorado, but they have the numbers three on one, and they're able to come away with the ball. Colorado. Ball coming in deep here on the near side. Number 25 with the center, but it's going to be long and high. That was number 25, Drew Zamora. And a goal kick now for Chicago. We've hit the 19th minute here of this second half, so just about 10, 11 minutes to go. No score. Hey, Thomas, drop in front of the back. Four in the back. Chris, Chris. Matt, Matt. Ball below midfield now, right down the middle. Colorado with the ball, the white jerseys. Frazier again here, Zach Frazier. Holds up, waits for some help. Now he moves into the middle of the field. He's got some nice footwork there. White again, trying to penetrate. From the middle, they go to the outside, but taken away by Chicago. Now Chicago making their move back towards the left across midfield. Ball stopped in the quarter. Centered in the middle. Oh, a little block right there. Ball was drilled by number 21, Eliason. So the ball put back into play over on the far side. Number 28, Fox. Brandon runs into some trouble, gets around the defender, and his shot will be taken by Tyler Picard, the keeper right there for Colorado. Picard with just a booming kick. It goes deep into the backfield of Chicago. They're here on the near side. Castro home number 30. Gets rid of it quickly, and the ball is out. Moving into the middle of the field, Colorado's number 25 off to number 21. Sai, still coming in deep. The keeper, Ryan, makes a diving stop to his right again. The problem there for Colorado is they came in too deep. And when you do that, you got to go one on one in a real close, closed in space with the keeper. And the keeper is usually going to win those, unless you get some air on that ball. But if it's on the ground, it's a keeper. Nine times out of ten, he's going to have the advantage there. And right there, you saw Andy Ryan taking control right there. And another collision going against Chicago. So a bit of a controversial call right there by the referee. And now the free kick direct here for Colorado. And that will be Frazier, Zach Frazier, number 20. Who will take the kick? And Frazier really has been the offense here today for the second half for Colorado. Although they haven't scored a goal, it goes out to the far side. Now they want to center it. Bud cleared away by number one, Ricky Kinka. So Rick, right where he needs to be on defense, clearing the ball out and away from the net. Now they come out. Colorado still with the ball on the far side. Let's go, hey. Derek's out and Brandon's out. Come on. Just about eight minutes to go now. No score. And another save right there by Andy Ryan. So Ryan, after the save, with a booming kick across midfield, trying to set something up for his teammates. You know, they've got eight minutes for either side now to try and get a goal as we're still tied at zero. Again, we're at the 2005 Surf Cup, the 25th annual Surf Cup. And this has been a nice game to bring you out here today. Clean, very evenly matched. Got a lot of physical play, a couple of injuries, but those players have come back into the game. And actually, Reese Flores over on the far side for Colorado. Still out taking a breather.
And so for Chambers, number 23 and number five, Alex Johnson into the game now. For Colorado, taking the place of number 12, Derek Ho, and number 28, Brandon Fox. So the ball out over on the left side of the field. It'll be a goal kick. I mean, a corner kick, I'm sorry, for Chicago. So Chicago with an opportunity here late in the second half, keeping it on the ground, trying to center it. It comes out, saving it there, number 38, Chris Mills. Mills now wants to move inside, goes outside, angled over to the corner. Now he's going to stop, back off as he hits the line. High into the air, off the hands of the keeper, but a nice save. Wow, and I'm not sure how in the world Colorado was able to stay tied there on that last exchange. That ball drilled and right in front of the net, making the save for Colorado. Helping out their keeper as he went up. And what an opportunity right there for Chicago. But it looks like they're gaining a little bit of momentum. They're trying to penetrate that defense of Colorado. And let's see if they have some confidence and go right back at it again here on the near side. Anthony right back into the middle of the field. Castro and he goes right back to Anthony. A bit of a little give and go there on the near side. Anthony now trying to angle into the middle of the field. The ball rolls and rolls near the corner and is saved from going out by number eight. Centers it in the middle of the field. The ball rolls out towards midfield. And now it's Colorado getting out and running right now. Down the middle of the field, number 25, Drew Zamora. And that shot is going to be way off its mark. A big break for Chicago. And Chicago with the goal kick. Derek Ho comes back into the game for Chicago. For Castro Hone, number 30. Ball here on the near side of the field. Number 19 for Chicago, Eric Castrejon. Battling here on the near side. Now the ball taken away by Colorado as they move over to the far side. They've got some room to run. They're trying to spread it open again. And I've said that over and over again, but they just haven't had much luck with it as Chicago's defense has gotten back in and plugged up those holes. And that ball bounces harmlessly over to the keeper. He was going to use his legs and finally decided it was in too deep. And Grab the ball at the last second, picks it up. Come on, go to it, buddy. Let's go. Come on, stop by. Ball in midfield. Now Colorado brings it across. Ball near the corner is a header. On a bounce into the hands of the keeper, Andy Ryan. So each of these teams dodging bullets here late in the second half. And you're tied at zero, so we're here late. Let's see if somebody gets aggressive. And a header from behind, number 21, is going to be whistled for the penalty. Sai El Hadi. Ball belongs to Chicago, number 38 there, Chris Mills. Goes right down the middle. Castor Hone, Eric, number 19, coming across to help number 21, Elison. Now battling for the ball, coming away with it. Number five, Kepler. Aaron Kepler. Now he'll move it over the middle, or in the middle, over to the far side. Rapid number three, though, now with it for Chicago. Ball high into the air right at midfield. Finally comes down. Let's see who controls it. We've got just about two minutes to go. Unofficially, of course, so we'll start watching the referee listening for that whistle again here. Shot in front of the net. Can he get a shot? There it is. And that ball's going to find the back of the net right between the keeper and that far post. Number 21 for Chicago scores a late goal here. Matt Elison. So Matt puts his squad up as he takes a shot from the far side just to the far side of the middle of the field. Goes right up one-on-one -on -one against Tyler Picard late here in the second half. Ekes that ball in, hits the side of the net, bounces around, and the Chicago Wind are up 1-0 late here in the first half, or in the second half. And that could be the game winner right there. Ball now back deep into the backfield of Colorado again. Ball across midfield. 
Frazier. Zach Frazier with the header. Colorado, they still have the ball here on this end of the field. Can they get a shot on goal? Try to score and tie it up here late. Cy again. Cy number 21 going up against Eric Castro. Hill number 19. The ball moves into the far corner or near corner across the back line and belongs to Chicago. It'll be a goal kick. Referee looking at his watch there in the middle of the field. We're very, very close here. Maybe a minute to play. Wow, with just about two minutes to go. Matt number 21 for Chicago with the score, puts his squad up 1-0. Goal kick right across midfield now. Eric Castro, number 19, right down the middle here to the near side, number 23, Chavers. Ben Chavers. Ball goes out, it'll be a corner kick for Chicago. And Chicago not in a hurry to get the ball back into play. And it doesn't look like Colorado's in much of a hurry to help them either, although they trail by a goal. Ball in the corner, wrapping, bogging it down there. Now it comes out, a little bit of a push. We still play, continues, wrapping will fall to the ground as he's tripped up. Ball still in the corner and out here on the near side. Just a few moments to go here in this match, and it looks like it'll be the Chicago win with a 1-0 victory over this Colorado Real, Real squad. As unofficially now, according to my watch, we have hit 30 minutes here in this second half. And so what I'll say, if Real can't clear it back downfield, and they keep it here, this is going to be it. What a job. Nice job by each of these teams, taking it all the way to limit. And it's just Chicago able to push one through just a little bit stronger here today. And now here's Colorado coming up towards midfield. And now across over on the far side. Holding up. There's a whistle. That's the end of this boys under 17 match between the Chicago win and Colorado Real. And with a late goal with just about two minutes to go off the leg of mad number 21. It is a Chicago win with a 1-0 victory over Colorado Real. What a great day for a game here. Nice wind blowing. The sun is out. Beautiful day here in Del Mar, California at the 25th Annual Surf Cup. And what an exciting match that we brought to you here today. It was my pleasure to bring it to you, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. So until next time, we hope you have a great day. Be safe, everybody. And remember the final score, Chicago win one, Colorado Real nil. Ken Gonzalez, George Langevin Productions. We're here with the victorious Chicago win here at the 2005 Surf Cup, the 25th annual Surf Cup. And we're going to get some player interviews right now. And to my left, who do we have? Anthony Calizzi. Um, I'm number eight, and I play left outside mid. I'm Ben Chavers, number 23, and I play forward. Uh, I'm Matt Eliason, uh, number 21, and I play attacking midfield. So happy that's your last name because then nobody dotted an I in that roster, and I said, God, I hope it's Elias. <laughs> so I got it right. Might not know anything else, but at least I got the last name. All right, this match you just played, pretty physical. Was this like one of the most physical matches you've had at least this weekend? Um, I hope. <laughs> when we played surf, it was a little more physical. Really? Yeah. yeah. How'd that, what happened in that game? We lost 2-1. to 2-1, to one. they're a tough yeah, team. They're yeah, they're a tough team. They're hometown teams. The hometown team, you know, I was looking at the bracket, and they got like 38 points, you know, after three games or something like that. So you guys did a really good job. It's definitely the hardest team we've played, or hardest game we've played in a while, though. Yeah. This one here? Yeah, surf cup. The surf. I guess surf. Both pretty similar. They're both very fast. What's the main difference between, like, say, a team like surf and the teams that you normally play? Uh, the surf, well, they're they're coming from like the west coast, so they play all year round. So their their foot skills are always better. And we're just coming out of the summer, so we haven't played as much as them. So that's probably the main difference. Probably and just a, maybe a step quicker or yeah. something like that. Now, how long out of the year do you guys get to play? Uh, 
summer, spring, and fall, and then I mean, and then winter we play indoor. But during fall we play with our high school, so we don't play with all these guys. Right, so it's a little bit different. Now at the end of the high school season and the beginning of the early season, do you ever like conflict and have to take time off to play with your club teams? Um, what do you mean? Not usually. Like, like, no, when you're, not, like when you're in your high school season. Like a lot of teams out here, they'll be in their high school season, and a lot of the good players will miss the championships because they're off playing with their club teams. Right. Uh, no, we, we would usually play with our high school. Yeah, I don't think it's legal to play. Yeah, yeah, have to yeah, yeah. yeah right. By yes, we're not allowed to play two teams at, or be on two teams at once. Unless you just totally quit your high school team, which I think is what they do. But anyway, it's out here. Were you guys out here last year? Yeah, yeah we didn't do as yeah, we well as we did well. this year. This is our first time out here. It was a learning experience. <laughs> yeah. So how have you guys done so far? Have you played two or three? We played three. three. We won two and lost one. Oh, so you guys are in the elimination. Yeah, yeah. we're going to corners. corners. Good job, good job. Beautiful weather out here. Oh, Probably yes. a little bit hotter in Chicago. Yeah. Right it's now. Humid, more humid. It's more humid. It makes you sweat more than here. It's just hot here. It's not like making you sweat when you're just walking. So it's just... Well, you guys are going to think it's funny, but this is like way humid for us. We're dying. <laughs> yeah, we're like dying out here. It's never usually <laughs> it's humid nothing. It's nice. <laughs> so have you guys been doing anything fun at the hotel, getting in trouble? I don't know Always. say that to yeah. the camera. No. <laughs> well, you know, it's going to be about a month before anybody sees it, so you'll be long gone. <laughs> all, right. Uh, all right, guys, good job. Is there anybody out there you want to say hi to back home, anything like that? No. no. <laughs> hi, Mom. Hi, <laughs> right, guys. Good job, congratulations, and uh, good luck later on. Ken Gonzalez back with the post-game interviews. We've got three more players to my left. and. Who are you guys? I'm Chris Mills, uh, number 38. I'm a forward. I'm um, Adam Rappin, number three, and I play midfield. I'm Eric Casarejon, and I play left mid. All right. All right, guys, we were talking to your buddies there. Say this is a really physical game. Would you agree that this is one of the most physical games you've had? Yeah, we're not used to the, you know this kind of competition in Illinois. When you come out here to the tournaments, you get a big range of competition to deal with. Do you think the referee did a good job of trying to keep control of things, or did he let it go a little bit? Yeah, he, he did a good job. I think... Uh, there were a few fouls he missed, you know, the usual, but it, good job. He got the main one, so I think, right? Yeah, he did. Now, the guy that was isolated on you, especially there in the second half, do you think he was running out of steam? Or, I mean, it looked like you guys were having a little bit better time, especially as the game went on, getting past, past their defense. Yeah, because, like, when we, at the end, we were just touching the ball, so they got more tired. So, like, at the end, we took advantage, and we just used all the rest of the energy. I noticed that one thing that they tried to do early on, they kind of went away from it, then they went back to it again, was they were trying to spread the field wide open with long field passes, but you guys weren't giving them the lanes at all. Yeah, they realized that it just wasn't going to work, so we uh, collapsed on them and then they just tried, to, uh, tried a different approach. Mm -hmm. Did you get a feeling there in the second half that if you could just push one through that you'd have these guys? Because I got the sense on the sideline that you guys had a little more momentum, even though it was still tied 0-0. They weren't really having much luck getting in deep on you guys. Well, yeah, uh, we fell apart a little bit at the end of this first half, and and we got motivated in the halftime, and and then we just went out there, played our game, and pretty much shut them down. And if we put one through, they their confidence went down because they had to tie to. The, even if we tied, we would have gone through. So, right. even late in the game, when you had the corner right here. They weren't even in a hurry to get the ball back into play. Yeah, we just stayed there wasting time. Yeah, I mean, they, it's yeah. like they didn't even care at that point. Yeah. They... So besides soccer, do you play any other sports out there? Sometimes I play basketball, but only in school and like in gym. Yeah. yeah that's so this it. is your competitive sport, right? Yeah. How about you guys? I play basketball for my high school too. Yeah. What position are you? Uh, point guard. Point guard. All right. Yeah. Soccer. Some stream sports, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody plays baseball out there. No. Yeah. Not with dying sport. I think. <laughs> um, all right, now who do you guys want to say hi to out there or get crazy with, say anything you want? Um, I got nothing on my mind right now. No girlfriends, nothing? Well, there's this one girl, Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. Send her a copy of this? Yeah. yeah. Say hi to her. She might like it. She might. Uh, I don't know. I'll say hi to my parents, <laughs> my mom in Portland. Well, as long as you didn't say hi to Kelly, it's probably good. Uh, yeah. Well, he likes her too, but I mean. <laughs> yeah, only my parents. That's just about it, yeah. They didn't make it out here. They still back home? Yeah, they stayed at home working. All right, good job, guys. Appreciate your time. Good luck the rest of the way, okay? Hey, thanks. thanks. All right, good job. George Landsman Productions. I'm Ken Gonzalez. We're back here with a Victoria Chicago win here at the 2005 Surf Cup. And to my left, who do we have? Alex Johnson. I'm 16, 155 pounds, and number five. I'm Derek Ho. Uh, Number 12, uh, defender, 135.
I'm Brennan Fox, number 28. I fluctuate from 145 to 146, and I play offense. I've got the little ding like they do on the Dan Patrick show when they give their weight. I don't know if you guys ever knew that, but that's the power of the microphone. You didn't have to give your weight, so I just thought that would be funny. And <laughs> Y'all went for it. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, good game, obviously here, one nil. Uh, was this the first shutout you had here? Or what about your other victory? Was that a shutout? Um, oh yeah, the uh, other victory. Yeah, it was a shutout. Uh, our first game, we lost two to one. Surf, they're a pretty good team. Uh, the shutout was Houstonians, beat them one to zero. They're all right, but we managed to pull through. Just like this one here. Yep. Um, how tough was this game, or was it more tough? on you guys because you thought you should have put the ball in the net sooner? I mean, or was, basically was, was the team you were going against tougher than you thought they would be or not as tough? Actually, uh, the team we were going against beat the Houstonians that we, uh, we played last, uh, yesterday. So we thought it was going to be a good game. And it was a good game, but all we needed was a tie. So uh, we were just, just trying to keep the, the ball out of our net, but then we ended up scoring. So it, was, it all worked out in the end. So when you say that, though, you were still trying to at least win the game, right? Yeah, yeah. You didn't want to Yeah, we, we wanted to pull through with the win, so we did. Yeah. That was good. That's a good job. So you go on to the elimination rounds. Do you know who you play first? Probably not yet. Oh, either, I, either Crossfire or... Uh, I can't remember. Uh, probably Crossfire. <laughs> They're good. Most likely Crossfire. Have you seen them play? Uh, uh, they were in the recently. finals last year, and then they win it. They won it last year. They won it last year. I wasn't here last year, though, so I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> So is this your first time out here? Yeah. In California or? In California is my first time. So it is my first time out here tournament. So. What do you think of California? I love it. I'm moving here. Oh yeah. Yeah. Go to school here. What about you? You've been here before? Yeah. I was is here it last the same year. as it was last year? It's pretty much. Yeah. It was nice. It was a little more rainy last year. I was going to say you had the most rain last year we've ever had seen yeah. in like in a hundred years or something <laughs> like that. It was it was pretty bad, but you can't beat this. Yeah. All. This is amazing. Yeah. Pretty good. You guys do anything? Beach? Anything? Yeah, we went to the beach. Uh, we get we went surfing thanks to our coach. He, Did you have to do that too? No, he got an instructor, one of his friends, surfer Mike. <laughs> and uh, we all were able to do it. It took a couple tries, and then we went out on our own and just and hang there. We got bruised up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Did you go out? There are a lot of pretty women here, and yes, I did go out. There are quite a few, quite a few, especially in your age group, especially right now in the summer, everybody comes out. A lot of people from Arizona yeah, right now. Yeah, especially. Really this is really nice here. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say something. I t completely forgot. So was that the first time you ever surfed? <laughs> yeah, for me, yeah. yeah. And the water is warm. It's like 78 degrees. Well, we thought it was pretty cool because we went in the morning, so it was... Yeah, well, but, the sun but, wasn't out. You know, yeah, but once the sun came out, it was nice. You guys do anything else for fun out there except play soccer? Uh, I'm in a band with my couple of my friends back home in school, and we play all kinds of music. Right now we're into uh, jazz and stuff like that. That's cool. What What do you play? I play drum set. Drum set. Uh, uh, I just hang around with my friends sometimes, go out, uh, just play video games, <laughs> yeah, right. stuff like that, go to the mall. Try to pick up chicks, stuff like that. Exactly right, exactly. I have a feeling you probably do the latter there, what he said. I snowboard. I'm a hardcore snowboard guy, so. Hardcore? Like, explain hardcore. Uh, I go to Colorado twice a year for like a week, so I, I do that. And I snowboard every weekend or every other weekend if I can, so it's good stuff. Do you make any plans with any of the Colorado Real players there to snowboard? Uh, I don't know. I've got to go talk to them. They hook me up with some free passes. They probably hook you up. They might not be too happy right now. <laughs> we beat them, so I don't know. Exactly. exactly. If, you, if they would have won, they'd probably be more helpful to you than, yeah. than before. All right. Who do you want to say hi to? Uh, my mom, my brother at home. Mom, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just want to say hi to my family back at home. I said to my family in Hayden. You guys come out here pretty much alone, no family or? Uh, I'm here with my dad because parents are team managers, so we need. Okay. So you kind of need him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's got a nice little <laughs> job looking after all you people. <laughs> exactly. exactly. At this age, at the hotel at night, yeah. it might be a challenge. I can see that. Yeah. Good job again. Congratulations and good luck tomorrow, okay? Right, thank you. you. Ken Gonzalez back for George Langevin Productions. We're at Surf Cup, Chicago win. Take the game 1 0 over Colorado Real. We got some of the guys that are key to that, and who do we have here? Uh, Ricky Kinka, and I play center defense. Uh, Thomas Coffin, and I play center defense. All right, Ricky, I know it's you. Let's switch from this side. You're over on the far side there in the second half, getting pushed around a bit. You were pushing around. 
it looked like what you were doing on the far side was kind of going unnoticed by the referees. A lot of pushing, a lot of shoving going on. Yeah, that's usually what happens when you play in the back. There's a lot of pushing. They don't want to call most of the fouls because it could lead to a goal potentially. So they try to keep it they fouls love. low. Yeah. Definitely. What about you out there going up against a guy you were going up against? Yeah, same thing. I mean, sometimes it gets a little rough out there, and hopefully the ref doesn't see. If you just give an elbow. It's fine. No one's. All you can do, right? It's fair play. Whatever. Sometimes you want a team, you know, some of your teammates are talking about these West Coast teams being maybe a little bit, maybe a step quicker or something like that. And I know the last thing anybody wants to do is resort to real physical play to slow them down, but sometimes that's really all you have left, right? Yeah, that's last line of defense is just to try to knock them off his balance or anything you can do to get them to stop from going to the goal. And, that, and I mean, and, and there's ways to do that that's skillful, that isn't exactly a penalty. I mean, yeah, you use your shoulder as a legal play and anything you can do to stop them. You didn't do any of that out there today, did you? What, use my shoulder? Oh, no, I did plenty of that. All the time. All the time. They went pretty much unnoticed, right? Yep. Yeah. The ref doesn't care anymore. Like, over, over the years, it's just, it just become natural for, for people to use their body a lot more. And so now, now everyone does it, and the ref goes, it goes unnoticed. Kind of like how they used to let Michael Jordan take four steps instead of three. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's what I always thought anyway, especially from the West Coast. You, know, you never liked that at all. Uh, so what have you been doing out here for fun? Um, I've actually been out here, I came down last Tuesday because my uncle lives up here, so we've been staying at his house, me and uh, two of my friends, one of them's playing, Brandon Fox, and we've just been going to the beach and hanging out, going to malls and movies and stuff. So you're pretty familiar with the area then? I'm getting a little more familiar with it, I can get around now. Would there ever be a choice to come out here and go to school maybe? Yeah, it's really, no, the weather is perfect and everything, but it's just so crowded, there's people everywhere and traffic everywhere and everything's crowded all the time. Just too much for you? Yeah, go to L.A. A little worse up there. <laughs> what about you? What do you think of Southern Cal? Well, the first day we actually went uh, surfing with the team, and like uh, the team took lessons, and then we all we all went out there, and like we were actually surfing some pretty nice swells. It was pretty gnarly. Yeah. Was Is that the first time you've ever done that? Oh uh, yeah, all of us. Really? Yeah, no one had ever done it. This from our coach, knew this guy named Surfer Mike, and he was. <laughs> Surfer Mike sounds like a popular. Yeah, he was he was pretty cool, and so he, he hooked us hooked us up with some boards and. We just got out there and started riding. It was fun. Good day or good game here, you guys. You want to say hi to anybody back home? Just want to say hi to my, the rest of my family staying at home and my friends back in Chicago. All right. Shout out to my parents and all my homies. Yeah, that's who I hit. All right, well, congratulations and good luck tomorrow, guys. All right? right? Thank you. We're back. Three more players from the victorious Chicago win as they defeat Colorado Real 1 0. Who do we have here? Mandy Ryan. I'm the goalkeeper. I'm Mikasa Horn. Uh, defensive mid. Stefan Antonievich, defensive mid. And another last name that I'm very happy that I got correctly there on the sound one, you know. Pay, pay me the big bucks to get those right. All right, goalkeeper, man, you did a great job out there today. Thanks. It was, uh, it was uh, tough work, but, you know, they did good. They did well, defense. Toward, there was a play towards the end of the game. They attacked you here from the near side. The guy was maybe three feet from you. Just drilled. Yeah. yeah I, I don't know. I just kind of just... Hope that I get in front of it, you know, because it was right there, you know. So he's coming down the line. I didn't want him to get beat me near post, so I had to just wow. get in front of it, and luckily he just hit it right at me and just smothered it. So. And well, at the time, what I said was too, he had come in almost too deep, and really, if he had kept the ball on the ground, you were going to save it. If he had gone up in the air, probably would have yeah, been a different story. Yeah, probably would have, but yeah, who knows? You know, well, he he put this. it low, he so put it low, and that's what happens. Yeah. You know, that's the way it went. Yeah, that's. But you went to your left the like three or four times in this game, and. You know, from our angle, can't tell if it was going to go in, and you can't tell either. Yeah. But you were right on it each time. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, probably a few coaches out here. What year are you? I'm going to be a junior. You're going to be a junior. Got a really strong leg, so yeah. probably as you as you get up so. there, it's going to be even stronger. Yep. So. Um, do you do play football or anything? Like that? No, no. Uh, tr I'm a track. Track. Yes. Yeah, pole vaulter. So. Oh, cool. That's a first here. All right. So moving on over. What other things besides soccer you get into? Um, when I was younger, I used to play basketball. That's about it. But besides that, it's just soccer. So you're just concentrating on soccer right now. You a junior are going to be a junior also? Yeah. Did yeah. you guys go to the same school? No. He go, where do you go? Lane Meadows. <laughs> yeah, I go to Waukegan. It's like an hour away. <laughs> oh, really? So you guys are from a spread out area? Yeah, we're not all really from the same place. Some of us, but not uh, most of us. Are you, are you near any one of these guys? Uh, no, I'm not. Actually, I go to Stevenson High School. So uh, it's kind of far out from here. From where they live, so you gonna be a junior also. Yes, I am. Yeah, how long have you guys actually been playing together? Well, I've actually been playing with the 
my our goalkeeper Andy for a pretty long time for how long in? About five years. Yeah, about ten years. Yeah, but we around ten team. years. And then Jaime came on the team, I think, two, not two too long ago, ago, two years ago. So, so but uh, we've played as a team, even though we haven't been together very long. So, it's turned out very well for us. Yeah, you did a great job today. Now, how long have you been on this squad? Uh, I was in it uh, one season, and then I I left the team, and then I came back. So you went to another club for a while? No, I was down in Mexico. Oh, really? Did you play down there? Yeah, I was playing with Atlas in Guadalajara. I bet that was some stiff competition down there, yeah, too. Yeah, it was. I was playing third division, and it was, it was crazy. There was really good players down there. What's the difference between the players in Mexico and when you come back up here? Uh, it's not, there's not much of a difference. Here's, I think, it's a little bit faster than down there. But besides that, it's about the same thing. So they catch you on, like, a short passing game? Yeah, short passing, game. exactly. More tactic, but it's about the same thing. Now, during the course of this game, you guys went 2-1, and one, I believe. 2-1, and one. gonna play tomorrow. Or do you play later today? We play later today. Yeah, play later today. Today, they say maybe against Crossfire. Yeah. And uh, obviously they went all the way yeah. last year, but teams are made to be beaten, yeah. obviously. Uh, what kind of uh, attitude are you going to go in to that game with? Just the same attitude we've came in on all three games. You know, we, we've all been playing hard. We all put our heart into it. So, you know, if we just keep our composure in the back and, you know, Win all the 50-50 balls in the middle, we should be fine. So. Right. And you guys are used to going deep. You, you were first in the regionals, Midwest regionals, is that correct? Uh, yeah. Oh, well, no, not first. We uh, went to the semis. semis. But, uh, so, first yeah. in league? Uh, that I don't know. <laughs> so, some of the info I got, that's what it said. So it's like you guys are, are definitely used to being very competitive. Um, that's for sure, and you definitely showed it out here today. Uh, now, did you all go surfing also? Yeah, that was, that was intense. <laughs> yeah. That was fun. First time ever? Yeah, what first time ever. What did you think? Would you come away with on that? Do you want to do it again? Uh, of course I would. It's just uh, I just wish I was a little bit not, so, not as tall because uh, I couldn't really keep my balance. But it was really fun, you know. You know, finally get, get by some water, have fun. Great looking women out here, so. That's what everyone says. That's, that's not a downfall, exactly. Any other things you wanted to do while you're out here that you haven't been able to do yet? Uh, no, not really. This is, this is my fourth trip. This is the team's third made. trip, so, you know, it's... This is all same old, same old then. Yeah, yeah. So Veterans coming out here. All right, before we leave, give you a chance to say whatever you want to anybody out there. Uh, hi, Mom. <laughs> I, uh, hi, Mom. <laughs> I guess. Of course you can. That's probably going to take long. I'd like to thank my whole family, family from Phoenix, uh, Chicago, and my dad, who's been coaching me for a long time and training me, and, of course, my coach uh, right now, Michael Litvek. And uh, I just want to thank my grandpa, who uh, passed away not too long ago. So playing hard for him. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Congratulations, guys, and good luck the rest of the way, okay? Good job. King Gonzalez back here with head coach Michael here of the Chicago win. And, Mike, what a great game. Came down to the wire. got the score with the last two minutes of the game. What would you tell these guys at halftime? Because I noticed you guys came out with a little more, a little more attitude, basically, in the second half. Well, what I said is, uh, you know, the first time minutes of the game, if you watch us play, we were knocking the ball around well possessing the ball, but when we start getting out of our game and knocking the ball long, we kind of got tired at the end. A little, you know, not organized very well, but I told the guys at halftime, you know, knock the ball around. They're going to get frustrated, you know, play our style of game, two touch, and uh, we'll be okay and we get through. I thought we had a good couple of chances, especially the first and second half, and it just, uh, you know, it went our way with the last two minutes, but we could have uh, put another couple in, I think. I talked to some of your players a little bit earlier, and we all <clears throat> discussed the fact that they tried to spread the field quite wide, but you guys were able to converge on them and shut that down quickly. Kind of took them out of their game. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they were playing with uh, with three up top, and I had five in the midfield. So I uh, instead of dropping someone back in the back, I just kept it five in the midfield, so we won the midfield. We had two extra guys in the midfield. And uh, as long as we opened up wide, and when we got the ball, it worked out for us. Now we see this team, when they play back home, they've come out here to this tournament. Have they really kept to their style of play? Has it been hard for another team to kind of pull them out of their rhythm? Well, I, I see uh, I see us fitting in in the Southern California kind of style. You know, they, they're technically very good, or well organized. You know, they like to knock the ball around well. And that's kind of our style of soccer. We don't like to uh, the play the dump and chase kind of style like the, some of the Midwest teams do. So that's why we do successful here is because we, we know how to play soccer, basically. Exactly. Well, the only loss you've had so far to a really tough surf team, 2-1, to one, and that's mm -hmm. almost a victory in itself right there. Uh, so you go in with some nice momentum into the elimination rounds, and probably you need to tell these guys just play what they've been doing. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, just rest now and uh, come out and play. That's all about it.
and it'll be about a month or so before anybody sees this. And if you want to, you know, say anything to your team out there, they can hear in about a month something about them, how the way they've been playing this year. Oh no, you know what? They've been, uh, you know, we struggled in the first couple of weeks of the season, uh, but we've turned around very, very nicely. You know, we uh, we're playing really good soccer, and uh, we're looking forward to the future with them. Well, thanks a lot, Coach, for your time. Thank good you. luck, and uh, hopefully we'll see you later. Thanks so much. All right. And that'll do it for us here from the 2005 Surf Cup. I'm Ken Gonzalez for George Langevin Productions. We just had some great interviews with this squad, a good bunch of kids and this boys under 17 team. Really fun to interview them. Again, the final score, Chicago win one, the Colorado Real team nil. Late score, just the last two minutes of the game, put them up on top, and now they get to go into the elimination round. So that'll do it for us here on Sunday. Game time was 940, and until next time, be safe and have a good day, everybody.